Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to talk about my first ever marathon experience back here at home in Jersey and we're just going to go through kind of the training leading up to it and the day itself and yeah, basically see how I got on. Firstly, before we go on, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, come on, I know most of you aren't subscribed so yeah. What are you doing? So the journey started a few months ago where I was basically at university and I wasn't doing anything special to train for a marathon. Really interested in triathlon, so running was just part of my usual training together with kind of university sports. You know, with the with the triathlon training, so I was running like five days a week and then swimming and cycling on top of that. So there wasn't really a goal for any long distance running events in that sense. But then, yeah, I just came across the idea of a marathon as in the, you know, Ironman triathlon that I want to do in a couple of years or whatever. That's the end goal. I ha I'll have to do a marathon. So I thought, why not test myself by just doing the marathon for now? And yeah, basically see how I can get on. There I came across that the Jersey Marathon, so back home for me here, is only a couple of months away. And I think it will give me enough time for my training to kick in and be ready for that time. So I thought, what the hell? So I signed up and yeah, from then on, we started training. Hello, hello. So yeah. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Recently, whilst walking past the Brighton Marathon, I decided it's time for a challenge, as that's the only way I'm going to be able to get the most out of myself. As of now, I've started a new marathon training plan. But yeah, so it's been the end of week one now, so I've done quite nice chill recovery runs. The longest one was like 3.2k, so nothing, nothing too bad. The first speed run was 8 times 1 minute at my 5k pace, which was quite easy. Uh, and then the long run. So that was 8k week one. Very, ch I'm feeling quite positive with the plan. Thing is, thing is gonna work out. So that's where the journey began. I started just scanning through the internet for marathon plans, tips, tricks, all that good stuff. Uh, before coming across the good old Nike marathon plan. So I, I got a um, Apple Watch with it was like the Nike edition. So I had the app already on there, and they do a lot of guided runs that I just yeah just make life very simple. So I got the marathon plan on there, and yeah that included running for 18 weeks so that that's the plan and i think i had more than enough time by then uh, to complete the whole the whole thing uh, and that included doing five runs a week so we had three kind of casual runs you know easy running nothing too hard with an uh, increase in duration with every week then we had one speed run so that was yeah kind of working at that higher speed than i would run the actual marathon at or it can include some uh, tempo runs uh, so that idea of getting uh, comfortably uncomfortable when uh, running at a higher pace or doing some hill uh, intervals as well so yeah mixing it up so it just keeps things fun usually on the weekends i tend to do my long run so whatever that will be an hour thing started off with and then yeah gradually increased over time uh, so the start looked pretty promising so in brighton it's quite flat over there so it was yeah nice and easy running nothing too hard uh, and then yeah so I was a bit optimistic in that department and as I set myself a goal of uh, 3 hours 30 and oh boy was I wrong. So every everything towards coming up to summer was looking good so I was I was running regularly. I also had the other tr trainings uh, on top of that so it kind of increased my kind of fitness in that way. But then dreadful summer months came <clears throat> where with the mixture of a lot of things going on, so exams, stuff like that, it just kind of started slowly going downhill. And with the return of Jersey, uh, after I finished university, I returned to Jersey. And this is where I started running. So kind of getting used to the, the home soil and getting used to the roads that I'll be running on. And it was uh, very quick to see that the changing terrains here in Jersey. So it's much more like up and down, up and down little hills that you may not see with the eye but when you're running you can really feel them and this is much different to Brighton where it's, it's close to the sea so it's basically flat. From then on I saw a little slowdown in my times and I think that kind of demotivated me a little bit especially in the longer runs when obviously it was summer as well so it was warm and it was difficult to get used to that heat and from then on that's when I started to introduce kind of running with my pouch thing from my mum so nice bright pink one as I realised that I would definitely need to uh, bring some water and now start introducing gels into my training for those really really long, long runs. <clears throat> Needed to adapt to the new terrain basically. Uh, when we returned to Jersey things got even worse when I went to holiday to Poland so obviously as we all know going on holiday 
during your training isn't uh, the best. The weather in Poland was even hotter firstly, so it made running even harder then. And together with kind of visiting family and doing stuff every day, you know, it was kind of hard to keep up the, the routine of running in that in that regard. Yeah, that was kind of my mid-program drought based mindset. I kind of didn't feel motivated during that period and it was yeah really hard to get back into it. After the holiday we returned to Jersey and we started picking things up again. So yeah when I returned to Jersey I returned into my usual routine and I think it definitely hit me that my goal of three hours fair was very ambitious and that and at that point I think my mum also made me realise that for the first marathon, I think it's just important just to finish. No matter what the time, just get through it and see what happens. I was getting a bit worried because during my longer runs that I've been doing, um, it was like, I think the longest one I did two weeks before the actual day it was a 32k and kind of towards the end of it I really started to walk which wasn't great and I think I just I don't know what happened like my, my body just couldn't do it um, and I was getting a bit worried there but I just I just thought to myself it's better for that to happen during my training than the actual run kept strong to the program doing it no matter the day the weather whatever just to be ready for the actual day and furthermore leading up to the event I also found out that I was actually the youngest runner to be participating this year and I was uh, likely to be invited to meet up with a few other runners as well as the CEO of the sponsor of the marathon Standard Chartered, Henry Bay. So we yeah, we all met up for lunch and yeah, it was just really nice to chat with all the other runners. So there was um, someone celebrating their 65th birthday, someone running the 100th marathon and also this guy doing a marathon alphabet challenge and Jersey was his J. So yeah, just amazing these people and I and see the reasons why they do the running yeah it was just really nice it was the day before the event so it was nice to get kind of pumped up and get into that race day mindset so I have to say uh, the actual day of the race I think the nerves never really hit me and I just kept telling myself that it's just another weekend where I have to do my long run and kind of leave it at that so yeah basically the day before I got my stuff ready just to make sure I'm I'm fully prepared for you know whatever comes I had my gels my water my kit and then the the morning of had my usual big bowl of oats as you guys know watch the previous vlogs had that did some stretches did my usual poo got to get out of the way uh, and then yeah looked outside the weather did look a bit sketchy i think it was raining uh, at the time when we were leaving but when we finally traveled to the start in san helia and um, the weather calmed down a little bit it was a bit wet but i think that made the, the kind of atmosphere quite cool so it was uh, quite perfect for uh, running the marathon basically so yeah, I started stretch stretching there, kind of doing some awkward stretches. Um, so everyone else was doing it, so the five minutes before the start, I needed the toilet, um, and I was in the long ass line when the announcer said for all runners to get on the start line. Took a quick gel, and yeah, we got ready for the start line basically. So we had a few words from Henry, so the CEO of Standard Chartered, uh, and after that, yeah, we got started. So we had the usual tryhards at the start go off. Yeah, my goal, I think, was initially to stick with the four hour marker. Uh, just to see if I can keep keep up with them. So obviously that was running about um, six minute a K, and the start looked promising. You know, I was I was keeping up, feeling good. Definitely started <clears throat> too fast than I should have. I was like, okay, this is, this is a bit quick, but I think uh, just the excitement of the day got to me, and I just wanted to, you know, see what I can do and. Yeah, so that definitely started a bit too strong there, especially with the big hill coming up at the start. Yeah, as soon as we got to the hill, I realized I can't keep up. So uh, we let the marker go. And then from then on, the plan was just to stay just behind the four hour marker, but mainly to not have the four and a half hour marker in sight behind me. That was So I, I was kind of in between those two. So that was my goal from from then on. Um, after the, the hill went, went all right, so I did a bit of practice beforehand of that big hill. So I felt prepared and the whole first part of the marathon went quite quickly, you know. I had my little routine, so it was basically trying to get to the next aid station so I can fill up my two little bowls. Uh, in the fueling department, uh, I tried to take a gel on every like 40 minutes half an hour kind of vibe the start was a bit slow as my stomach f still felt a bit full after the oats so I kind of let that let that go but yeah I think it's important to make sure to take those gels regularly especially if you're a new runner really important not to take the gels when you're hungry but you know just before so you never actually get to that hungry part because so everything was going fine um, obviously I slowed down a little bit but until the kind of three quarter mark that's where um, so about I guess 32k that's the longest I've ever run and um, the next 10k was just to see how well my training prepared me to run the full distance. It was hard 
I have to say it was hard. So I was kind of in that weird space between four hours and four, uh, four hours thirty, where there wasn't many uh, runners next to me, and um, I did take a few kind of walking breaks um, in that last ten k, just to kind of get my groove again, take a gel, uh, drink some water. The sun kind of started to come out at that point, so it was getting a bit warm, which uh, which wasn't great, and my legs were feeling very dead. But, you know, there was loads of supporters along the way, which is the most important. And when I ran past my home, um, and then further a bit along, my family was there to support me, which was, you know, best feeling ever. <laughs> Thing. And then you just kind of have to smile and, and let them know you're okay when you're really hurting inside. What made me really proud about myself is that I never really stopped to walk for like a long period of time. It was just little breaks and even if it was really slow run running, I, I kept going in that regard and yeah, that just made me really proud of myself. So luckily the last um, kind of I guess 8k was all downhill, so from San Brelards down to uh, St. Oban's Bay and then to town that was all downhill. It was very tough that last little bit. I saw one of my teachers take me over so for the last like K or two I really picked it up because obviously I can't have that so I managed to overtake them. I think the worst part about the last little bit of that Jersey Marathon is that from kind of St. Oban's Bay at, at one end you, you can see where you need to get to whereas all along the way it's more like windy roads and trees so you can't really see where you're meant to heading but that last bit you can see the whole bay where you need to get to and that felt a bit like oh, oh my god it's still a long way to go finally you got to town uh you got you get to that last little bit and there was loads of people waiting i'm always a sprint finisher so i sped up as much as i could give it all i got towards the end there. yeah there was just loads of people cheering and when you're kind of running running through that last little bit of finish it's, it was so unreal it's it's almost like you're like a proper professional event and everybody's like cheering you on and they're there to support you as well as every other runner there and that little moment and that little moment when everybody's there it goes so quickly when you pass the finish line and you kind of like what's going on because you're still in that running zone and you're like oh my god i just finished yes! Yes! and everybody's like you get your medal you go to sit down get some water and yeah just feels great and those moments go really quick so if you're ever doing an event like that make sure you enjoy it when i finally crossed that finish line which was amazing so i finished in uh, four hours 25 so obviously it was way off my goal but i was just so happy to finish so at the end um, the event was actually like really nice i think for the price just kind of looking back on it i think i spent about maybe between 50 and 60 pounds and you know you get a full event um and then at the end you get a uh, a hat a top and there was also so standard charges obviously the sponsor of liverpool so they got some liverpool legends to come down um, you know i'm a united fan so i got no clue who they were but we got a signed liverpool hat which was nice so um give that to one of my scummy liverpool fan friends and then yeah we got a free pint so i got my free cider which was lovely uh, but obviously i dem demolished my domino's pizza later which was lovely although i didn't hit the goal i wanted i just i'm just so happy that i, I, I could finish and get those goosebumps it's just something that really means a lot to me and i will definitely remember that for the rest of my life you know i'm only 21 so being the youngest marathon finisher on that day was, you know, a great feeling. Next up, I think it's definitely time for relax and take running to the side a little bit as I think towards the end of my training, slowly could see myself hating running just because it was kind of a, I had to, then I wanted to towards the end. But yeah, obviously it was really worth it to get through that. And it's part of training, you know, and being uh, involved in sports that not every day is going to be your best. And it's kind of working your way through that in the end. Thinking about, you know, running a marathon, getting into running. Don't think you're going to be running so fast straight off, but just enjoy every run that you do, you know. Get your friends, family, anyone you can to come run with you. Because that's kind of just the best thing that can that can be, you know. Main thing about running is that it's for everyone. You just need a pair of trainers and then you're good to go. A lot of it is just training your mind more than your body. If you can get your mind straight, it will help you in all aspects of your life to, you know, keep going, not give up. That's the end for me. So let me know if you're looking to do any long distance running or any activity down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And yeah, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio!